Microphone check. One, two, what is this? It's the five foot seven assassin in the podcast business. I am your host, Rohan Patra, the rap music plug at your service. The rap music plug podcast presented by QLC TV is the remedy to the I don't have anything good to listen to problem. Through in-depth album and song reviews, as well as artist interviews and general rap commentary sprinkled in between on all of what the mainstream and underground rap scenes have to offer, this is your one-stop shop to knowing what to add to your queue, play next, or pop into your record player. Welcome to the show. What is up, family? Today, I am talking about two albums, so I'm going against my one topic, one episode, new format that I've adopted over the past few weeks, because The God Fahim and Yoral Drug released two projects within a few weeks of each other, so I'm going to first quickly cover my thoughts on the first project, The Wolf on Wall Street, before diving deeper into the more meaty Yod Fahim. So Yorol Drug is a New York MC born in Ukraine who has catapulted himself to the forefront of the underground hip-hop scene in recent years, delivering a prolific output of quality records since 2019, in particular Dump Yard from 2020, that was my number two album of the year. I thought it was phenomenal and showed that Yorol Drug is at alien status rapping-wise. This ascension is due in no small part to the tutelage of the avant-garde Makami and the god Fahim, who he linked up with around that 2019 time period and hasn't looked back ever since. The aforementioned Fahim is the definition of prolific to the point that if Drug is prolific, Fahim is pro-prolific or something. He's a producer and rapper from Atlanta that has created a ridiculous amount of work in the dusty East Coast vein for the last decade. So starting with The Wolf on Wall Street, my short and sweet thoughts on this project is that there was too much talent here to lead to such middling results. It was a good listen, surely, but didn't move me like it should. Fully produced by the God Fahim, the production was nice and clean, surely, but too simplistic for my liking. The feeling I got from the production was something that I also got from Drew's lyrical performance that felt solid, but not nearly as hungry as he had sounded on his previous projects. It was a stark contrast from Dump Yard. Lyrically, this album goes into some interesting spaces, particularly meditation, where Drew gets deep into his motivation, where he says that all people could have done was just say he was good. But they didn't, and now he's always on the prowl to prove people wrong. But overall, this album just fell a bit flat for me. Nothing about it was truly bad or horrendous or anything to that stretch. But it just felt dry, with an uninspired performance from Droog in particular. So The Wolf on Wall Street was a 6.8 out of 10 for me. So now moving to the Yad Fahim album. While The Wolf on Wall Street felt like a Fahim album in terms of how straightforward it was, I feel like the more varied production and the fact that there are some actual solo Droog songs here makes the Yad Fahim feel like Droog took the lead creatively, and I think it's better for it. Because this album is more dynamic than the predecessor, and right off the bat, what stood out to me was how much more interesting this album was instrumentally. These beats are much more dynamic and varied than the one-tone, gray-sounding Wolf on Wall Street beats were. The album starts off strong with a dope track, Icy Shop Entrees, with an excellent production job from who I imagine is Preservation, although for some reason with your old Droog projects, it's really hard to find the album credits, so I don't really know exactly who's producing all of these songs. But Preservation is who I believe produced this first track, and I love the seamless beat switch on here and the ice cream shop-like kind of melody that's going on in the first leg of this song. I really liked it. 
Mailman has an addictive piano loop that fits Fahim's flow in particular really nicely. I thought he wrote that beat tremendously. WNBA has this nice smooth guitar melody that sets the tone for the smooth talking that Droog was going to bring forward on the track. And finally, the soulful vocal sample on Lost Smile was so sweet sounding too. I loved that. From a lyrical perspective, I think Fahim continues to perform just as well as he did on Wolf on Wall Street, showing that he is a very underrated MC and deserves respect for what he can do on the mic. Having a knack for dropping knowledge related to self-empowerment in a way that is very plain language and simple to understand, allowing his ideas to really hit home with the listener and resonate. Droog, on the other hand, sounded reinvigorated after a still solid but overall sort of Droog on autopilot performance on Wolf of Wall Street. What is becoming clearer with each and every project is that Droog is well aware of his place in hip hop and definitely cares about what his legacy will be when it's all said and done. And even past that, his legacy as a man. So there is often lyrics related to doing things the honorable or right way, both in rap and just in life in general. There was a great line to this point on Stretch where he raps, I don't write rhymes, I write my history. Particularly, I like the wisdom of the line on questions where Drew raps, just because someone died before you doesn't mean you outlived them. I think that was really deep. And Fahim joins the party too, dropping in some really nice knowledge throughout the entirety of this track. Droog also showed some more songwriting growth on the track WNBA, showing a side of Droog that I continue to wish to see more of, because dude can really pull off the smooth talking in rap. His flow is pristine on this track, with maybe his best hook of his entire career, placed nicely in the song and transitions really well from the hook to the verse. And speaking of hooks, Fahim contributes a lot of catchy refrains here on this album as well. And from a punchline perspective, Droog is in top form with a bunch of quotables again on this project. Fahim brought it from start to finish, rapping wise too. And I particularly like his flow and some of the bars on Rain Man. Fahim overall just needs more respect, man. He deserves it. He has some great lines on this LP, like on Slam Dunk Contest. Keep in mind, this is a track with Ural Droog and Pharaoh Monch. But he stands out still, where he closes his verse by rapping, I let bank notifications alarm and wake me up. That is a fucking bar. I love that. Speaking of that track slam dunk contest, the two features on this album were really dope. Particularly Monch on slam dunk, showing once again that at age 48, 48, 48, dude is still in the upper echelon of lyricists. Where I think... This album begins to lose a bit of steam is after the WNBA song. Because after that, the ensuing lull hurts the flow of the album with probably my least favorite beats back to back in Dunkin' Dutchman and Long Time Coming that don't fully do it for me. Particularly Long Time Coming that has a poor hook and overall just a sluggish quality to this entire song that I didn't like. On Dunking Dutchman, though, I did still appreciate the narrative of both Droog and Fahim piggybacking off each other and highlighting their pride in their triumphs in their career and how far they have come, which I thought they articulated quite well. After that, it ends on a fine note with questions, Lost Smile, and 90 from the Line, but it didn't really wrap up with the same amount of punch that the album started off with as the back half of this album was sometimes lacking in energy. Even if I can acknowledge that it logically flowed from the high energy beginnings, much more battle rap focused, dropping some punchlines and quotables, to then the more introspective, reflective second half, it it had a logical flow that made sense, ending with the victory lap in 90 from the line from Droog. I just think... Maybe then the energy in the productions, or at least just the quality overall of the productions, could have been switched up or changed, because like I said, the production wasn't nearly as impressive 
on the latter half of this album that I think brings it down a notch when it's all said and done. I do think this album would have packed a stronger punch had it been slightly closer to the Wolf on Wall Street in length, maybe just trimming a track or two from the latter half of this album, because it's less impressive musically even if the majority of the lyrical weight is found on this portion of the album. So my verdict for the Yad Fahim by Ural Drug and the Yad Fahim is a 7.8 on 10. It falls just short of being truly great in my opinion due to the aforementioned issues in the back half of this album and I think overall the production could have been at a higher quality if they did want to go down this road of making the last half of the album much more introspective and low-key. I think there just needed to be a bit more balance there to keep my attention from start to finish as it does sort of wane towards the end of this album. The Yod Fahim is not the same supremely impressive affair that was Dump Yod, but it gets better and better with each and every listen and is another great addition to the catalogs of the Yod Fahim and your old Droog. So this concludes today's episode of the Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV. I hope this episode gave you some fresh new perspectives on the latest rap releases, as well as a recommendation for the next great rap record to add to your collection. But now that I've spoken, it's your turn to have your voice heard. So let's stay in touch. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Rowview, R-O-H-V-I-E-W, to connect with me on a personal level, where you'll be able to interact with my thoughts and perspectives on music, surely, but also on politics and sports as well. If you're an artist who wants to get their new song or album reviewed on the show, hit me up via email at qlctv.podcast at gmail.com or just send me a DM on Twitter or Instagram. I would love to give you public feedback through a review or private feedback if that's what you'd prefer. I would love to be a part of helping you grow as an artist to help the show grow and ensure that everyone's listening to the best rap music at all times make sure you leave a review and rating on apple podcasts so that the show can be spotlighted by that wonderful algorithm and be exposed to more people for exclusive content and updates related to the show follow the rap music plug podcast on facebook you can find all of this information along with exclusive playlists created by myself by clicking the link that's in the episode's notes so that's all for today. Talk to you soon. Peace.